Hi, uh, welcome to the finale. Oh, I just realized that my Twitch tab isn't muted. Oh, that's horrible. Um, <laughs> welcome. Yeah, welcome to the finale of uh, the Midnight Hour, a campaign in the Victorian horror system, The Between. Uh, before we start today, I'd love to have everybody introduce themselves and their characters, and I will start with D today. Hello, my lovely creatures of the dark. My name is D, and tonight I'll be playing Lefarian. Uh, my pronouns are anything that makes you feel all warm inside, and Lefarian's pronouns are he slash they. Go ahead, Caleb. Oh, I'm Caleb. Um, I use he, they pronouns. Um, my character is Victor, who uses he, him. He doesn't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on either. I'm going to kill an owl. Good for you. Uh, go ahead, Joel. Uh, I'm Joel. Hi. Uh, I play, uh, I, I go by they, them most of the time, but pretty much whatever works is fine. Uh, and I play Igor, the butler um who is also uh uses whatever pronouns are more convenient at any given time cameron good evening my name is cameron blair uh and i uh, use he him pronouns and i play harper villains uh who also uses he him pronouns and who's left nikki Right. Um, I am Nikki. I use she, her pronouns. And tonight I will be playing uh, Dr. Helena Betancourt, who also uses she, her pronouns. Okay. And uh, I am Max. I use they, he, he, they. I don't really care uh, which one goes first at this point. Uh, and I play everybody else. <laughs> um, and... Uh, before we get into our recap, I will give my disclaimer that uh, The Between is a horror system uh, involving blood, death, and uh, mild gore. Uh, we did have murder victims uh, in our past sessions, and this session uh, is likely to get uh, some action of some kind given where we left off last time. So if that isn't your cup of tea, uh, feel free to check out some of the other shows on TTRPG instead. Uh, this week. Um, and uh, with that being said, does anyone want to give a recap of last session before we start? You get a free re-roll in your bank for doing that. I mean... I mean, I can try. I was going to say, I have notes. <laughs> Go ahead, try. Yeah. <laughs> the notes are um, pinned in our Discord. <laughs> Oh, cool. I didn't look at those. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I remember where we ended. Um, so at the beginning, we were at that girl's house, Abigail. I got there. Um, we were at Abigail's house um, because um, the, um, the boy who was interested in her is now dead. Um, and we had suspected that she might have something to do with it. Um, what we landed on is that she's really nice um, and a lesbian, um, which is fair. <laughs> um, and then, um, but possibly her mom had something to do with it um, because he is a vampire-like creature now. Um, and we think that she was in charge of that. Um, also, I was justified in my fear of owls um, because they're connected to them, too. And I felt good about that. Um, <clears throat> but we went back to our house and we were just having a grand old time. Um, and Abigail showed up there um, along with a bunch of dead bodies that are just outside of our house. Um, we were trying to figure out what was going on with them. Um, I'm pretty sure that Abigail's mom, whose name was Veronica, I just remembered, um, she is probably there and responsible and we're gonna fight her, maybe. 
I found that really entertaining. I should ask you to do that more. That was great. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yes. So uh, where we left off, there were three victims that uh, Abigail had stumbled upon outside, one of which Dr. Betancourt was able to help bring back to consciousness uh, before they passed over to the other side, while the other two, a little bit less fresh, we're not so lucky. And while the owl is gone, there is signs of the owl having been there. Um, and uh, now you all are um, in the house uh, figuring out what to do. Um, well, I think Harper and Igor left. Didn't you guys leave? Or are you still here? Yeah, w- yeah, we were just about to leave. So you were about yeah, to we're gonna chase the Also, after. that third person is alive. Because I gave them a chance to Yes, vision. I said that. Oh, yeah. you said tri- yes. passed over to the other side. I thought you meant the person that we revived passed over, not the other two. Okay. Oh, no, the, no. The, the I'm person, on the same the page person now. that you revived is is okay. Not, like, incredibly coherent um, or doing particularly great, but alive. Um, the other two uh, are, are dead dead. Uh, what happens to them after being dead dead, I cannot tell you. Um, and you are to find out. Uh, so, oh, and Lefarian, uh, rejoins us today, who wasn't with us, uh, last week. Uh, so Lefarian, mind you that, uh, two of your followers are dead outside and one of them has, uh, been getting blood transfused from Dr. Betancourt, um, in your parlor, uh, as you reemerge from what I assume to be a long nap. Um, or otherwise very important activity um, in your quarters. I think ironically enough, Lefarian was working on uh, the song that is intrinsic to uh, their playbook. Uh, And we'll just come down the stairs and see Dr. Betancourt performing this transfusion. I would assume we're tending to the patient in the recent aftermath and being like, so what exactly happened here? That's a long story. Um, Victor Darling, will you please explain? I'm not quite, I'm a bit tired actually. Hmm. Um, I mean, that I that is what happens when you let blood. Yeah, she holds her arm um, up when she says, I'm a bit tired. She holds up the yeah. arm that she was using to transfusion. And she doesn't have Igor there to, like, bring her food. So she's just like, I'm just tired. You deal with it. Yeah, um, I mean, I didn't see 100% of what happened. Um, but um, I saw Abigail um, trying to... I guess save this last guy um, who um, um, the doctor ended up helping out. Um, well, that was good, um, but um, I mean the the main person. I guess no. I mean we even talked to Abigail. She didn't really see anything either. It's kind of we kind of missed the action. Mm. Um. It, are the corpses brought inside? Can I see those as well, or would I have to be? Would I have to step outside? Them inside? I don't remember. You would have. I don't think you guys brought them inside. You went outside and checked them out, uh, but they should still be out there at the moment. Okay. Uh, Lefarian will see them, and then just start making their way to the basement and say, uh, "Harper and Igor are where?" They, um, they were going to go try to find who did this. That's what I figured. Wonderful. I'll have to play catch up. Uh, and we'll go into the basement. It was, it's probably we're gonna about... Get, we were going to get mm-hmm. the assistant. Sorry. We were going to okay. get the assistant for the uh, lady uh, Abigail was what we were yeah, going to. Yeah, the Marion. That's but, her. God, she exists. But it's probably like halfway down the road that Harper just fucking stops. And says, "Gotta cut off the heads." We didn't cut off the heads, and mm. he just turns on his heel and goes <laughs> back to the body. 
pulls out a machete and just goes up to their bodies and just real swift, real easy, uh, with a practiced hand, just... Igor, pick up one of the heads, put it in your pack. <laughs> yeah, so so you guys hear the footsteps of your compatriots coming back. Um, the sh- of uh, metal and uh, some subsequent hacking uh, leading you all to kind of peek out the window uh, to see uh, Harper doing the good deed of stopping the dead from, from rising, uh, in which uh, you see Dr. Betancourt Igor going. <laughs> at this point, at she's that un- point. she's unhooked herself from the transfusion, so she just like opens the window and says, Igor, dear, um, take one of the heads for us, please. I'm just gonna open my my bag, grab the head, and put it in, close it, and just stand there watching. Was, and then she turns and say, looks at everybody and says, "Don't worry about it." And Lafarian will stare at Doctor Betancourt and say, "Don't worry about it." They will be put to good use. Hmm. Uh, and Lavarian comes back up out of the basement uh, with the baseball bat and like a heavy like duster type coat, puts on their sunglasses and steps outside with Harper and says, perfect. I was hoping I wouldn't have to track you down. All right. Are we all just going to go? I feel like it'd be better if we all went at this point. Um. I mean, I'm not against going. I don't know if we should leave Abigail alone. Shit. And Lefarian's li- like a surviving follower is also uh, in your living room right now. I will. Well, also- I'm feeling a bit weak anyway. Why don't I stay here and have a sandwich um, and feed? Our friend here, who's also feeling quite weak, and the rest of you could head out. Um, do you really do you think the three of you could handle it, or do you want to take Victor with you? That's up to Victor. Uh, but also, if it does come to it and something shows up, uh, we do have our friend in the basement that is a little bit uh unnaturally capable. You make a good really point. Think it's and a good he idea re- to just let him out. <laughs> I don't think he'd hurt anybody if he was wasn't hungry, and I especially don't believe that he'd hurt Abigail. So I mean, yes, but he also, um, I don't want to say that he killed his friend in front of Abigail. Um. <laughs> well. Uh... <laughs> And we didn't feed him yet. No? I mean, have you ever eaten, like, stale meat? It's not good. Yeah. It's all right. I've had worse. But you're not undead, Victor. Um. I mean, okay, but... (laughs) (laughs) We could let him try one of the people from outside and put put the rest of them to good use. If I may, Hmm? perhaps we can reuse or find new purpose for our currently headless former friends. Her name is Jessamine, and that one is Caldwin. Yes, them. Right. They, they've like been good- dead for less than six hours, so they would be fine for Cyrus to consume for all. And they've been in the snow. Purposes. Yeah. yeah. They're, that's all right. Just like the good doctor suggested, and Harper will just kind of lump both of them on over one shoulder and then carry both of the bodies uh, through the house. Helena's going to look and see which head is prettier. Which head is prettier, yeah. Lefarian? <laughs> Jessamine is a model. Okay, but would she go? But the feet I have are men's feet. Is she tall? Uh, well, she, yeah, she's a model, tall. so she's, so she's right. pretty tall. Uh, she looks at you and says, "Get the prettier one, dear." I have no clue which one's prettier, but all right. He just grabs the second head 
and just walks both of them into the house, I guess. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, Harper tosses both of the bodies in with Cyrus and says, uh, dinner time. You see him try to like scream, but like nothing comes out uh, because he can't uh, vocalize. Uh, but the reflex is there for him to like scream in astonishment. And so he does. Um, Harper kind of wiggles his nose and says, I told you I was worse. And then closes the door and leaves. Okay. He appreciates that you aren't going to watch him. Uh. <laughs> uh, to be clear, I, I wasn't present, so I don't know exactly what the general consensus is. Um, but whomever is responsible for this will die tonight. Just oh. to make sure that that's ag- agreed upon. Yes, absolutely. Yes, we're all in agreement on that one. Good. Um, not to pry, but was it necessary to remove their heads? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, if if we didn't, they'd come back. Uh, and try to kill other people. Oh, like you said. Mm-hmm. Well, will, they, will, will, will the bodies be returned to their families? Or am I yeah. worrying about the wrong thing right now? Uh, that's something to worry about down the line. They're being put to good use at the moment. Uh, and uh, we'll we'll sort it out once we once we're done with this evening. I'll right. I'll take care of the families. They'll be more than fine. But now That's we gotta go you. get we gotta go get your uh, your friend first, and uh, hopefully that they uh, they get we get them out safe. So that's our main concern right now. Uh, she already gave you her keys, right? I had her do yep. that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm forcing you all to hydrate with my own channel <laughs> points. <laughs> you know how many it's channel true. points I have? It's that I true. I have so many. Absolutely. No, because I, you know, do run most of the tech for this channel. I have forty thousand <laughs> channel points. Oh, so just oh wait until I'm not running tech and I'm not like on a stream i'm gonna be put putting yeah i put a spam filter so it doesn't happen but you know right uh who's coming to the house victor you coming and doctor if someone attacked here do you think you would be okay yes there are places within this home that we could hold ourselves up and I'm not really worried about it anyway because I'm quite capable I will take your word and I will go with you know where the guns are right doctor yes alright um and the doctor is going to look at the bat look at Igor and then look at Abigail and look back at Igor could you mm, mm, Igor dear before you leave could you drop off Mm. the pots that you've collected and put them in my laboratory he's just gonna put down his bag and pick up your bag that was that you used for the infusion since they're basically interchangeable (laughs) he <laughs> just leaves it for you that works as well right uh, Lefarian you got the bat you want a gun nope alright Victor you want a gun or you got your um, cat. cat you can carry a cat and a gun alright <laughs> do uh, we think a cat can use called, a gun I that's uh, called do <laughs> I, I don't think the cat could choose a gun, although that would be interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, something to work on. Yeah, um, okay. Harper will give Victor a pistol, uh, and then we'll be be set to go. All right, so we have Lefarian, 
We have Lefarian in the parlor with the bat. <laughs> we have, we have, we have, we have uh, Lefarian with the bat. We have Victor and Violet with a pistol. We have uh, Harper with, I presume, a weapon as well. A um, shotgun and a pistol. A shotgun and a pistol for, for our favorite cowboy. And Igor, uh, what is your equipment of choice? Uh, I, I think I was given a pistol, but also I have my, my umbrella, so I'll be fine. Wonderful. Uh, so you can never be too prepared. Am I rain? You never know. <sighs> How do you stop blood from splattering on you with that umbrella? Exactly. So the four of you head uh, back across town to the Davies estate. Um. It is nighttime now. It's cold and dark, and uh, the air is is like sort of cold and still. So uh, when you breathe it in, it like feels kind of nice. Um, I hope that makes sense to people that aren't me. Um, <laughs> um, it, it's not snowing or anything, uh, but the sky is a little bit cloudy. Uh, the moon partially obscured, uh, but not entirely so. Uh, you can see it shining brightly down um, onto the scene. Um, the house otherwise is as it was. Um, there's a light on over where uh, Cameron, you would know, uh, the good man's study is uh, where you were taken up on the second floor. Um, but other than that, uh, the house appears to to, to be dark, uh, dark for the night. All right, Abigail said, "Go back door. That's where the key would be good. And from there, we can go in and uh, find the servant, get her out, tell her where to go, and find the wife." All right. Wonderful. Would it be all right if I take point? I'm, I'm sure that it would be a lot less intimidating if uh, someone who wasn't brandishing two firearms and a cat and a bat would uh, approach. That's fine with me. Certainly. All right. Stay close, though. Um, I don't want to die tonight. And I'm going to head around the back of the of the house if it's possible i think it is but yeah so you you have keys uh you oh. uh because abigail gave you her keys that she took when she left uh so um you go in uh around it, it takes a little while uh because it is dark uh but you eventually uh find this back door um it opens up and leads to kind of like a smaller secondary kitchen of the home uh, where Marianne, who uh, is the uh, kind of uh, nanny slash handmaid, whatever you want to say, uh, that takes care of Abigail a significant amount, is um, is kind of just waiting up on a counter, uh, and she's doing some mostly arbitrary, you know, vegetable prep for a following day, chopping some carrots, et cetera, et cetera. And she turns expecting to see Abigail, and she sees you and her you guys and her face just like drops immediately. What happened? What happened? Where is she? She's safe. We've come to get you to safety too. She holds the kitchen knife up towards you guys very skeptically. Uh, Harper will step forward there and just kind of do the creepy like one finger at a time hand thing on Igor's shoulder and step forward a little bit into the light and let his eyes do the reflecting thing of like a wolf oh, in the woods scary. when you shine a light on. And he says, we are not the thing that you need to be afraid of in this house right now, ma'am. We have Abigail safe and fine. How did you get in here? She gave All us right. a key. Um, I'm, I'm not about to do this. You can either become a part of the mess or you can be removed to safety. I'm frankly at the end of a very short line of patience, and I don't have the time to sit here and convince you that we're here to help you. You can leave, 
or you can become a stain on the wall. She sticks the knife back in the block. (laughs) All right, let me get my shoes. Thank (laughs) you. You're a lot better at it than I am. Uh, I reckon that went well. She disappears pretty briefly. It's maybe only like a two or three minute absence. She scurries when she walks. It's hurried. Um, and she comes back in her, her coat and her shoes uh, with a bag on her shoulder. And she still looks nervous, uh, but uh, she'll go with you if you're like, uh, well, uh, where are we going? Uh, we're not going anywhere. Do you know where the Hargrave house is? Oh, that big old thing. Yeah, go there. Abigail's there and the good doctor is there. You'll be safe. Okay. Uh, I assume I can't come back here. Hey, that's probably a good assumption. Uh, you'll be back at the house at some point? Yeah, we may uh, trickle in, but uh, we'll all be back. Uh, then I trust that you can get Abigail's things from the safe. She gives you another key. Um, if you can. Uh, uh, Harper just hands that off to Igor. Uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll definitely get that. Right. Uh, Vic- Victoria, the wife, did she come back? Veronica. Um, Veronica. I thought I saw a light up in her office earlier. Uh, but she like walks past you and looks up the doorway. Like, I think she just has the curtains drawn now. I'm not quite sure. Oh, shit. All right. Question, Harper. Mm -hmm. Are we trying to be quiet? I'm not going to be quiet eventually. So, uh, wonderful. And Lefarian will start breaking out every window on this floor of the house is just going to walk from window to window with the fucking bat and oh my god Uh, so yeah this this prompts marianne to 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 hurry out holding her coat around her she is gone uh igor uh remember that that syringe i gave you uh this one yeah hold off on it for a little bit uh all right if things get weird uh i should be able to direct them in the right direction uh but use your best judgment so windows are breaking on the bottom floor of this house Uh, it's loud but the old man is at work and is up on another floor. So I will say that you have a few minutes uh, before he comes to see what the ruckus is about himself. Um, if it doesn't stop. If it stops, I will say he will assume that his staff has taken care of it. So uh, there is a ticking clock so long as Lefarian continues to break windows. If I mean- Lefarian is stopped, Lefarian will stop. But if no one's like, maybe we shouldn't break any more windows, Lefarian breaks every window on this floor. Yeah, I mean, our whole idea is that we're flushing the chickens out of the nest, the, the coop. We're basically mm-hmm. saying, like, hey, we're going to break all your shit unless you come deal with us, because we don't want to come look for you. So, uh, All right. I, yeah. Is, oh. can, um, can I look around and see if there's any prepared tea of some sort? Uh, uh, you guys didn't kitchen. come. You guys did come in for a kitchen, so there isn't anything like brewed at the moment. But there is like one of those like nice wooden boxes of uh, different teas available. I'm gonna just open my bag and grab the tea. I don't think any, they're gonna use it anytime soon. Fair enough. <laughs> and then maybe pretend that I'm being part of this and like knock a plate off of like the counter, just one, like and like just a to, cat. Yeah, I I helped. It's fine. Uh, Victor, question. Uh, 
I haven't seen much of your uh, your magic. Are you able to do anything with fire at all? I mean, I could try. Well, uh, when we do meet uh, Veronica, it'll be uh, mighty fine to have that on our side. Cool. Okay. So a- after a few minutes of this chaos, um, you hear a door creak open. I, uh, I, th- those of you who aren't actively smashing things, uh, you hear a door creak open uh, in the cock of a gun. Uh, uh, and there are footsteps um, and um, Mr. Davies. Did I tell you guys his first name? No, I don't <laughs> think so. Okay, so then I, I won't. Then I won't. Even if you did. He has a first name, but I won't tell you it. Um, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Then. Uh, and so you see, uh, Mr. Davies, um, in his um flannel pajama pants and uh plush uh dressing gown, glasses pushed up on his nose as he levels a rifle at you all. Then realizes it's you again and goes, oh, "I, I thought I liked you." Uh, Harper takes the barrel of the shotgun and kind of tips his hat back a little bit and is just like, well, I think you still might, uh, but uh, we are not here for you, good sir. Uh, we are here for your kind of wife uh, because she's stirring up way too much problems here in this good fine city of London uh, and torturing uh, your daughter. What? Right. Uh, it's probably going to be best that you uh, sidle on back in your office and get back to your work. Uh, I've been uh, expecting a meeting uh, as well. I believe uh, Victor has uh, a meeting with your wife uh, and her owl or in her owl form. Either way, uh, it's been very impolite that she's just been watching and not introducing herself. And I thought this was a country of politeness. I think you're going to have to roll to persuade um, oh, for this one. Uh, <laughs> uh, what ability would I roll with that? Uh, presence? Yeah, yeah. that Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. that would count. Okay. That's a nine. Uh... Not not bad the seven uh-huh. to not bad the seven to nine range. Um so there will be a contingency uh I suppose. Ooh. I just I need a second to think. Sounds um troublesome. Yeah, so uh, he will uh, offer, say, uh, I'll go back to my study when somebody explains what the fuck is going on. Oh, a clueless man. How surprising. Essentially, uh, your wife has made enemies of the wrong people by doing terrible, terrible things to several youths, including your daughter. And she really made a bad decision when she decided to touch things that are under my protection. So you can join your wife in becoming a stain on the ground, or you can go back to your room, close your door and work and pretend that nothing is even happening. Those are your options, and you have a limited amount of time to answer. She hurt Abigail? Repeatedly, from my understanding. She's not here, is she? No, she's actually somewhere safe, unlike yourself. All right. I will go upstairs. Uh, And 
you will not call the authorities about whatever my wife has done. No, no, not at all. There ain't no need for any police of any kind here. Fuck the police and Lafarian breaks another window. <laughs> Stop doing that. Oh, I designed those. Ooh, so sorry. Crunch, crunch, crunch. <laughs> Uh, well, if you don't mind, before you go back in your room, point me to the direction of your wife's office. Oh, uh, she, uh, her press is out there, you know, I in the big to, tall yeah. one. Perfect. Exactly. Well, thank you very much. And when you're is done there... saving the world, perhaps yes. a drink. One last thing. Is there anything particularly, I don't know, fragile that your wife is fond of that's in here that you could point me towards? Uh, she, well, it is rather valuable. Mm. Um, but she has, uh, she has an old copy, uh, of uh, the Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, oh, gorgeous book. Original pressing. Mmm. Be a shame. I don't like you. You shouldn't. I'm a very dangerous person at the moment. Go on. Back to your books. All right. <laughs> He's done. Just, He's done. Stay He's... in your room and everything will be all right. Maybe. All right. He is done. <laughs> yep. right. I'll pick up Where's the book. Fucking book. He didn't tell you where it was. He didn't. Oh, well, I'm not going. Anywhere. I have to find it now. Yeah. There was we we met in the sunroom, but there's we passed a library once or twice, haven't we? We did. Yes, there is there is a library um in the house. Yeah. Um, uh, Igor. Uh, I, as to, as to make, uh, if we're going to make our way through the house, uh, he's going to keep an eye out for a safe of some sort uh, to get the ladies' belongings that was were mentioned. Just. Yeah, I, I guess yeah. she probably would have told you where it was, uh, oh, to good. be fair, yeah. if she was giving you the key. So it is. Um, this is stolen from a place I know a safe is in real life somewhere. Um, uh, there is uh, like a like a wedding picture, a painting um, of uh, the lady and the man of the house um, on a wall in one of the hallways, and it's on two hinges. So when you um, swing it away, uh, there's a safe in the wall where the key that you're given uh, fits. Uh -huh. um, and inside of there is. Um, there's like a stash of emergency cash and it's up to you whether or not you take that. Uh, but the things that Marianne was probably referring to is, um, like Abigail's like legal documents, uh, like her birth certificate and, um, et cetera, et cetera, that kind of thing. I'm going to open the, the bag underneath the, the safe and I'm just going to. Oh, you're going to take everything in there. Sure. Uh, that That's might fine. be that, that, that might be fun. Okay. I don't look. So, I don't. I don't. We're in danger. I don't have time to like ruffle through everything. I'm just gonna put so, everything so, in my bag. And, so you um, have the contents of the safe. Yes, um, in the library. Fun, he says. In in the library. Um, oh God, the pure bliss of not being misgendered. I forget what it's like every day. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like who's D talking about? Oh wait, that's. <laughs> Um, so uh yes in the library um it is uh vast but also very well organized um this is of course you know uh was put together by someone who knows books and knows publishing very well so it's very easy to find your way to uh the section uh which seems to be all rare volumes uh, and, uh, there are a number of, um, original pressings of books, 
uh, the Count of Monte Cristo is there, um, very old and it's binding and it's on uh, one of those like little little book pedestal things um, in like an empty section uh, of the shelf. Um, you've got a Dracula, of course. Um, you've got um, what other books were even out right now? Uh, you've got a few old uh, Shakespeare scripts bound, um, Frankenstein spiral bound, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll there's take, a I'll take particularly it, the count since that's the one that was mentioned. And I will grab the book with one hand and tip the pedestal over with the bat. Oh my god. <laughs> and really if you guys are if you guys are interested, there are a number of uh valuable tomes uh here. Uh are there any medical tomes? I would say that the, there's probably a small section of medical texts. Yeah. No. I, Harper will blindly grab one and be like, mm, the doctor would probably like this and toss it in his bag. Uh, it's nice well, of you. Uh, Lefarian, uh, hmm. we're trying to, trying to flush this thing out. How do you feel about um, what's the phrase? burn it all oh what a lovely idea if i could add just a bit of flair before we get started my my pleasure and uh harper Wonderful. will pull out a an old a half empty bottle of whiskey uh and start tucking a piece of cloth into the neck <clears throat> um so she's in like an annex house she's like not in the same building we're in Right? Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. So it's it's almost like it's almost like a silo. Like they okay. they have another building originally, or it, it, it's cited that the purpose of this is that the uh, the printing press is rather large. Uh, uh, at this point in time, it really would be because there is no electronic printer or anything like that. Um, and she keeps lots of papers and lots of stacks, and so she. Um, she used that building originally uh, meant before they built this house uh, for farming when this land was once uh, for a farm uh, uh, to uh, keep her things. But it is it is separate from this house completely. Gotcha. Oh, do we want to burn it on the lawn? Well, is there a door that leads like I would imagine there's a door that leads out and directly to where that would be? Yeah, there's a pathway. Yeah. Is there, you said there is is a window, but the curtains are probably just drawn close? Yes. Yeah, okay. there, there are windows. Yeah. So Lefarian will uh, say, well, uh, I suppose if we burn the house down with uh, the man upstairs in, that may be a little complicating. But I like the idea of the fire and burning the books. So if you grab a lot of them and just, just follow me to the pathway over to wow. there. My pleasure. And Harper will get an armful. Um, and I want to essentially make like a bonfire set up behind me. And the fairy is going to open the Count of Monte Cristo and will say in a projecting theater voice while facing toward the silo, will say, life is a storm, my young friend. You will bask in the sunlight one moment and be shattered on the rocks the next. What makes you a man is what you do when that storm comes for you. And we'll just recite quotes from oh the Count gosh. of Monte Cristo <laughs> loudly at the building until there's a reaction. Um, uh, it takes a few lines. Um, uh, perhaps, I guess, of her own internal monologue to register that there is someone talking outside. Uh, even. Um, and you eventually see, uh, like a window fly open, uh, and a head pop out, uh, and the narrowing of eyes, um, and the window shuts and you can all kind of see because now the window is was open uh so the curtains have been drawn back uh you can see her disappear 
uh, down a stairwell. Um, and she appears, um, let's say, as a human, uh, also with a gun, uh, a few moments uh, later. Uh, as she, she, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. And she locks that door behind her when she comes out. Lefarian is like, mm, an, an apt passage, I think. All human wisdom is contained in the two words, wait and hope. And then I'll just like casually chuck the book over my shoulder into the fire of books behind me. (sighs) She winces. What the fuck do you people want? Oh, well, it's finally good to meet you after uh, we've been, uh, you've been a voyeur for a bunch of our adventures. Uh, I know Victor's been excited to uh, find the the wizard behind the curtain, so to say. Uh, I, my name's uh, Harper. Uh, this is Lefarian, Igor, and uh, Victor, as I just introduced. Uh, it's a pleasure to finally meet you. She doesn't say anything for the first few moments. Um, uh, Gun in both hands. Uh, She doesn't look nervous holding it. Uh, She knows uh, what to do. And and, uh, she says, In my experience, you introduce yourselves over tea and not burning my collection on my private property. Oh, is there a fire behind me? Hmm. Oh, now would you look at that? That's a bit my fault, so apologies for that. So clumsy, Harper. Uh, well, you know. Well, I- Igor, Igor is going to move a little closer to the fire and just kind of trying to stealthily warm his hand that isn't holding his bag with the fire out the books. Incredible. It's It's cold. <laughs> So uh, we came to speak to you about a, a few uh, missing young men uh, over the past month or so. Uh, I, I, we, we were wondering if you knew anything about that. Nothing of the sort. Mm. Well, uh, I hope you understand that uh, we're also investigating the deaths of two uh, two young, fine young people uh, that happened on our property uh, not too long ago. Ah, so uh, you're telling me that two young individuals uh, have just shown up dead on your property. Now that's a shame, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, it would be. Uh, now, just so you know, what kind of bullets do you have in those guns? Just to check. None of your business. Oh, that tells me all I need to know And Harper takes a step forward. Do you practice with that gun often? Uh, she shoots one round off uh, into the air. He's like, don't think I won't use it. Oh, you just better not miss, bitch. Let's Can I smack her? T- I'd like to smack her. If you get close to her, she's going to fire at you. So. I'm, 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 I'm you're, letting Harper take. Lefarian's mad, not not blind, blind rage. So yeah. I'm, I'm letting Harper do the physically fronting. Yeah. Harper will take another step forward and says, those are some nice firearms. I'm sure you got that on your many travels. How many people have you fed on? Here's what is going to happen, American and company. You are going to turn around, going to get away from my home. I'm going to leave my family alone. And we are never going to speak again. 
And if you don't, it's not going to be pleasant. Harper will take another step forward and actually toss the shotgun back towards Igor. You know, tonight's been a great night for me. And it might just get a little bit better. So I, I hope it gets uncomfortable for everyone. All right. At this point, uh, gun be damned, she is going to change. Uh, the thing that Veronica becomes isn't human. It isn't vampire. It isn't owl. It's sort of grotesque. Uh, uh, she becomes, you know, larger, maybe six or seven foot, uh, hunched, uh, slightly avian being with these large talon claws, uh, and strewn, uh, uh, feathers, uh, on her with the eyes that have the kind of, uh, drop shape, um, of the owl reflecting the light very similarly, uh, to your friend Cameron, um, there's a creature of the night. Um, and at this point, I think I want to call break a little bit, uh, a little bit early, but I think it's going to be a good place to call a break. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. Uh, everybody grab a snack, grab a drink, stretch, get ready for final fight. <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody. I uh, hope you had a good break. Uh, and we are ready to uh, cut right back to the action. Um, Abigail sits kind of hunched over the table, cards spread out in her hands awkwardly. Like, she doesn't do this much. She kind of has to hold them with both hands and be like, and what do I do next again? Well, you're going to put the, that card here. You know, this is really a four-player game. I'll teach it to you, and then when we have Harper and Lefarian here, we, we'll play again. Um... Have you ever played this game before? It's a Portuguese game. It's called uh, Sebeca. No, I don't I don't really play card games. Uh, and uh, Lefarian's follower, who I really forget if I gave them a name, I'm sorry, but I know I noted that they were American last time, says, and was, I, I've never played this shit either. It feels unnecessarily complicated, uh, but I'll give it a try. Especially if you said Lefarian's gonna play. Well, it's not much more complicated than, say, poker. Have you ever played poker? Yeah. Everybody's played poker, right? Abigail and, uh, probably like hasn't. Oh, they're very American. <laughs> Abigail shakes her head no, she has not. Well then, this game is played counterclockwise, and so we'll just pretend that someone else is here to play with- What? Actually? There is someone else here that might be able to play with us. Um, and the, the doctor takes her bag and then goes downstairs, leaves the head in her laboratory, and then opens the door to and looks at Cyrus. Looks in at Cyrus. Oh no! Oh no! He's he's like. Uh, I guess you're going down there, so you'll see. Uh, that one of the headless corpses has been uh, emaciated might be a good word. Uh, nothing has been like torn off, but much of it has been uh, uh, bitten pretty brutally. You can see that, like, the, you can see there's no like pigmentation of blood um, in it at all, but he's gotten a little bit neater. Um, Gotten a little bit neater in in his ways. Uh, maybe he's learned a little bit uh, now. Um, uh, and he looks up at you, his face just like all red again, like the first time. Uh, and he looks kind of like embarrassed. Be like, I am aware I'm muted. <laughs> Sorry, third car yell from the living room. Muted. Um, <laughs> I was turning on my speaker because I am probably the reason that Max was echoing. Um, okay, so sorry. So he's down there. He's confused why I'm up down here. He's down there. He's bloody. He's embarrassed that someone has walked in on him before he could clean up. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. No need to be embarrassed. Did you have a good meal? Are you at least feeling satiated? You don't feel hungry at all. Great. Do you like to play cards? I mean, every young man has played cards before. You don't have to speak to play it. You might want to clean up a bit first. Um, follow me. And she takes him to her laboratory. She's not even going to wait for an answer. She takes him to her laboratory. And there's a full, like, surgical wash-up area. Mm, don't mind that there. And don't eat them either. Those are from a project I'm working on. Uh, if you could please um, wash up here, because Abigail is upstairs. And I'm teaching her how to play Sueca. Have you ever played it before? It's a Portuguese game. You heard of it. Your, your <laughs> mom is, is Portuguese. That's so funny. My father is. Anyway, let's um do the things and tidy up and ooh, let me go get you some clothing. 
and she sizes uh, Cyrus up. Who is Cyrus the closest in size to between Igor, Victor, and Harper? Because she is not touching Lefarian's things. <laughs> um, I would say, okay, I would say that Cyrus is is probably like an average height man, uh, maybe uh, about five nine. Um, not particularly muscular in any way, but not, uh, not sickly, not Timothy Chalamet, uh, <laughs> type of, ty- like, what, not whatever is going on there. Like a solid Andrew Garfield. <laughs> okay. So who's the closest who, who does, to does a solid Andrew any? Garfield? <laughs> <laughs> All right, she's gonna go up to Victor's room and take Victor's clothing. Um, and yeah. run back. <laughs> um, and... Yeah, yeah, put these on, and... Yeah, Andrew, Andrew Garfield is 5'10", I kind of nailed that, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you also kind of nailed Caleb. So nailed, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, and then she's going to find something with a high collar, assuming that he's got the injury, like, visible steel, yeah. still. So she's going to find something high collar, um, grab one of her scarves so that he can, like, tie it. Um, so he looks fancy and then, um, like goes over to the washing bench. She like spiffs his hair up a little bit. Well, now don't, don't you look almost dashing, I would say. Um, so Abigail's upstairs and I'm going to let her know that you're not- His face drops. (laughs) You're not dead. And also she's gay. So it wasn't you. It was literally, literally her. Um, yes. (laughs) Because if you haven't noticed, it's not exactly common knowledge, or it's a little bit frowned upon still here in London. So <laughs> she stops understand. <laughs> like at this point, like reading your lips is is a problem. Um, <laughs> so she uh, brings him upstairs and uh, wait at the wait here for a second. Um, Abigail, I forgot to tell you something. Oh my god. Um. <laughs> How are you? Fe- how are you feeling, Dale? And by the way, like she's totally made her tonic with a little bit of morphine yeah. in it. Like she's probably feeling real calm and cl- like. Uh, I, I I'm feeling a, a lot better actually. I mean, I figure Marianne is on her way by now, uh, as long as everything's gone okay. Um, and and uh, once she's out, I mean, my father is reasonable, and uh, yeah, I, I feel I feel. Although I think I'm shit at this game. Oh. We all are. You know, it'll be fine. Um, before... I have a bit of a surprise for you. Um, Cyrus Wilmington's not actually dead. That's what she says. She says... Nothing. <laughs> and then the doctor's thinking and she's like, Okay, do I tell her that it was fake and that he never died or do I tell her the partial truth or the whole truth she's going with fake she's going with lying um so dear um it was all fake he he never actually died and he's just been in hiding with us here at the house because he was in he was in danger which that part's true um he's he was in danger of, of of being um, in quite a bit of trouble. It's actually illegal to um, pretend that you're dead, but there were some people after him that were quite bad. And so he's here. And we needed a fourth person to play this game, and I thought I'd bring him up. Shouldn't we? No. You, you, this is a really sick joke. Uh, no, 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 I not a joke at all. And she goes over and, like, starts pushing Cyrus in, into the room. And if I wasn't... A scream is heard across London uh, as... <laughs> uh, as uh, Abigail sees Cyrus uh, for the first time. I'm uh, sorry, I just re- remembered that you don't like to read. This is a common trope in many, many novels, dear. People fake their deaths all the time in but this is real life. Well, people fake their deaths in real life as well, dear. Cyrus, come here. And she she like goes to, to like uh like feel his forehead. Jesus Christ, you're freezing. It's it's rather uh, cold in the basement. 
You're keeping him in the basement? It's the safest what are they place doing for him. Here? And she keeps looking at him to answer, and he goes... Oh, part of the danger part his... was that, you know, they didn't want no. him talking, so he no longer can speak. Um, Abigail faints on your kitchen floor. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> I forget uh, how pampered this girl is. I'm sorry, I think that the person that you thought killed themselves because you wouldn't return their affections is actually alive and had his tongue cut out is grounds for fainting. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, but the doctor is a creep her. and would not think of it that way. <laughs> well, I'm you defending are my girl. I'm defending my girl. <laughs> Nikki, you are oh. fantastic. <laughs> um, sorry, dear. Don't take that personally. She's had a bit of a fright the rest of this night, and seeing someone who you thought was dead is now alive could be rather distressing. Though there are some people in my life that are currently presumed dead that I'd be quite happy to see. Um, I thought she'd be glad to see that you were around and that it wasn't her fault that you weren't around i was wrong so i'm going to she'll she'll be fine um it's just a bit of a shock and she's got a little bit of um m morphine in her in her system so she's probably fine um one second and then i'm going to tend to her get her somewhere's comfortable and wait let her wake up on her own she's not gonna like try to use smelling salts or whatever to wake her up because she's had a shitty night and um and that probably won't help her system any um well we're back at three for sueka that's fine i'll teach you two and then when she wakes up perhaps we can try teaching her again is anyone home what the fuck Oh, and like Dr. Helena waits a moment for Igor to answer the door and then remembers that he's not there. Um, <laughs> stands up and answers the door. Can I help you? Um, it is Marianne who has arrived Marianne. from across town. Oh, I am so glad uh, to see that you're here. Um, before you enter, I have a couple of surprises for you. <laughs> um, actually, where did you grow up, Marianne? Did you grow up in a house like our dear friend Abigail's, or did you grow up maybe on the countryside? If I grew up in a house like Abigail's, I don't think I would work in a house like Abigail's. Though right I suppose then. I don't work so your there constitution anymore. might be a bit higher than your dear Abigail's. Um, I have a few surprises for you. Number one, um, the lady of of the Davies' uh, wife, Veronica, is probably a strigger. Have you heard of that? It's like a vampire. Have you heard of that? Right then. So she she's one of those. And um, Cyrus Wilmington is not dead. He, he's in my parlor playing cards. That motherfucker. <laughs> she says. Why let him know about Abigail's proclivities? And he's very supportive and wish he had known. I'm what assuming... Proclivities? Okay, and um, that would be another surprise. Um, our dear Abigail is is a lesbian. Do you know what that is? And in real life, why would we pretend that she was a lesbian? Does this explain some things, dear? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I always kind of thought, but I don't. She was so Those that are close to us typ typically can tell. Um, follow me, dear. And uh, okay. takes uh, Marianne into the parlor. Oh, and Abigail did faint when she saw Cyrus, but she's fine. I have checked her. I am a doctor, after all. Um, Where do you have Abigail right now? Is she, like, laying on a couch or something like, like some that? some chaise lounge or some shit. Uh, yeah, she, I, I think Marianne will probably check her pulse, but finding that it is steady, she will believe you. <laughs> anyway, we did need a fourth for cards. Are you any good at Suweka? Uh, eh. Well... 
it's my favorite game, and Cyrus here al already knows how to play it, and the, um, dear, oh, oh dear, I'm sorry, I forgot your name already. Emery. Oh, Emery, right. Well, we did share blood, so I'm allowed to forget your name. Um, and she deals the cards and teaches everyone how to play Sueka, which I right. technically don't know how to play because in my family, only men get to play it, and no one taught me how, so... I know, okay. it's bullshit. But the doctor would That's know how. That's horrible. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, as that ensues at the Hargrave house... Uh, that was the best scene <laughs> that I've is ever the best seen scene on I've... a Amazing. TTRPG show I, ever. I will never cease to be happy <laughs> to have... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> play with See, you guys. As, oh. Nikki, as Nikki said that she was going to bring up Cyrus, I was like, oh no, she's trying to get me to do hand puppets again. But then I... <laughs> <laughs> that I that. That's the best way out of having two NPCs talking at the same time I've ever seen one faints. <laughs> and well, no, it doesn't matter because Cyrus can't talk. Also true. <laughs> so I was saved. Um No oh, man. art. High art. So uh Oh, I don't think anything could top that, honestly. That was the best. <laughs> That's <laughs> killing out. <owl. laughs> While Marianne, Emery, Cyrus, and Dr. Betancourt play Sueka on a more populated, uh, nicely fenced and uh, well gardened side of town, uh, four of us. Face Ostriga. Um, and uh, where we had left off with you all, um, Veronica had uh, just kind of snapped and taken uh, taken true form, I suppose I will call it. Um, if you type in, uh, I guess viewers alike, if you type in Striga on, uh, on Google and actually look at the like the art on the Wikipedia page, um, like the illustrations and not the stuff from The Witcher uh, or the old statues uh, that are around uh, Europe uh, that pop up, uh, you know, kind of like that. Uh, maybe a little freakier because it's real life. Um, I'm so that up. that's nightmare fuel. That's that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you're not weak-hearted, but but also don't watch <laughs> this then. Um, yeah. So we've left off there, um, presumably in uh, the initiation of a fighting scenario, um, and uh, because of um, I guess the time needed to to morph like that, I will give the four of you the chance to act first as she kind of undergoes uh, this change. Um, go ahead, Victor. Cool. Um, I would like to actually use my magic for the first time this entire game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so one of the things that I have... Um, on my sheet, it's rites of salt and smoke, um, and mine is blood sacrifice. One of the things I can do with it is try to trap a person. So what I would like to do um, is take out my little pin that I used to prick myself and prick my finger, drop that over the huge fire directly behind me um, to activate my magic, and I'm going to point at her. And I'm going to attempt to freeze her where she currently is. Okay. And I presume that you have to roll yes, to I make do. this happen. I absolutely so, do. Go ahead and roll. Okay. What do I add to this? Sensitivity. Great. Ooh. I don't even have to re-roll. I got a 10. Yay. Uh, Yay! On a 10 plus, the magic works without further cost. Choose your effect. So you're choosing what for her to be frozen in place? Yes. Yeah. So uh, almost like, uh, you know, almost like a sketch. Uh, uh, like the things that you guys had seen in your research of uh, this type of creature, uh, just as transformation is completed. Um, and she's going to begin reaching talons out 
towards you, perhaps bending her knees to take flight. She is frozen. Um, making my finale real short, as usual. Um, <laughs> I expect nothing less from you. Uh, who else would like to go? No, don't ever be sorry for using the things that your character does. Um, who would like to go next? Um, uh, I think it. Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, go ahead, please. No, go ahead. Um, I think at this point, seeing her transform, uh, Lafarian would just go, "Fine, take all the fun out of it. Why don't you?" And uh, I'll brandish um, Judith's knife, which is one of my rare, one of a kind objects that I have. Um, and it is uh. Yeah, I'll just I'll brandish that and sort of like be ready for uh, I'm not going to take point, but I'm ready to stab. All right. Um, Harper and Igor. Uh, Igor is going to shoot her with the shotgun. Oh, Um, shoot her where? Yes. Uh, uh no, he's gonna oh, he's gonna I know it's a shotgun, gonna, so it's gonna spread out, you know, to whatever degree, but like yeah. what's the general direction of aim? Well <laughs> Igor is no marksman, but Igor did got taught that the for a highest chance of hitting something, you hit a center mass, so he's gonna shoot for the torso. As soon as he's it doesn't even know that it stopped moving, just the moment it transformed and went for the attack, he pulled the trigger and then everything happened, so he's just gonna so when when kind of bullets scatter uh through her kind of general torso area um it isn't quite like the way a bullet cuts through flesh and you guys all probably know what that looks like for different reasons igor from perhaps your medical training with dr betancourt uh, uh because you are the one who shot you are the one i will exemplify uh for that um and it isn't the same as your experience when it, it it cuts into her and it does cut into her it kind of moves the way like if you shot a bullet into like a giant pack of model magic clay um that's kind of how it absor- uh, goes in it, it's like weirdly clean and it, it kind of sinks in the hole around it her body you can see kind of like the clothing tuck into it a little bit um where the bullet lodges uh somewhere um and uh, when it bleeds, uh, she's frozen, but uh, it's 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 icky and, and black. Um, I That's really sweet. would like to shoot a bullet into Model Magic Clay after saying that. I want to see what that looks like so bad. That's just that is very clear in my head what it should look like, and now I want to know if I'm right. That there's um, a video of it. There, Somewhere. I uh, I'm calling Adam Savage out of retirement right now. <laughs> Come back. Almost said. I bet there's a Ghostbusters, uh, not Ghostbusters, Mythbusters video. Da, 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 da. I was so close. Da, 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 in my head there. No, there, no, there probably is. Um, uh, and uh, Harper, uh, do you got anything? Uh, yeah. As everyone else is doing their thing, Harper will take off his bolero hat, toss to the side take the duster off, toss it over towards Igor, crack his neck, and then his body will just start to, his bones will start to break. Uh, His legs will uh, become digitigrade, getting another joint uh, as he just, I would say, gains a few feet in height and the hair starts to sprout off of his body like... uh, almost starting as rashes and hives at first, but then just getting messy animal hair, uh, growing magnitudes and hands, claws begin, and his face just rips the skin. You can see the muscles and ligaments as his face extends into a snout, uh, and he assumes his cursed form of a werewolf. And will just lunge at the exposed neck of Veronica and with his claws just go to take her head off as quickly as he can. Um, can you just roll for me? Um, uh, 
I, it is slipping my mind what mm -hmm. the uh is it vitality yeah. yeah um and you can uh you can roll an extra die so you can roll 3d6 and take the best two because you're in uh this form Okay, uh, with that plus my two, that's 13. Good Lord. All right. So uh, the three of you have learned something very interesting about Harper today. Um, yeah. That perhaps I'm, you... I'm... <laughs> I fucking called it. <laughs> oh, God, I love the sound of Lefarian saying that as Harper just like goes to town on this pitch while she's frozen. I was going to give you guys one round before she like started to snap out of it as well. Um, but um, yeah, uh, uh, Harper having, uh, having changed and, and become more uh, lupine, uh, pretty much all, all but tears the head from the body. Like it's a paper doll. Um, it is. I still don't like it. <laughs> are you doing this with claws or teeth? Claws. Uh, yeah, so uh, you've got bloody claws and um, the head of uh, Veronica next to the body uh, on the lawn as the body kind of begins to regain uh, sense, um, having been cut off by the brain, which in my head is what like makes the magic work. Um, sure. uh, like a chicken good. with its head cut off. Um, uh, kind of like swiping out uh trying to get towards all of you uh but this is a fighter blind so it's very easy for you guys to um get out of the the way um and um after you know a few seconds of that uh the body collapses too um just inches away from the fire uh that you've lit burning her precious pile of books do we need the body? Harper's we, we need over to. in the shadows with the head just has it in his mouth, just shaking it like a dog. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to take that as an assumed no. Um, yeah, I'll, no, I think we need to get rid of this. I'll scoop up the body and stare at it for uh, a second. Um, and I'll just dip my finger in some of the blood and I'll write. Um, Jessamine and Caldwin on uh, just uh, just her torso, and then chuck the body into the fire. Uh, Igor is gonna just casually, uh, nonchalantly walk over to Harper and, and just and Harper fucking runs, <laughs> runs off into the night. Um, are Should you going to try to chase after him? I was just gonna grab my bag and chase the fucking wolves. It's fine. <laughs> I need the cardio anyway. All right. Um, I mean, I could try to trap him too. <laughs> you, that's true. <laughs> if if you wanted, <laughs> I'll fucking do it. Why not? <laughs> if that is okay with all players at the table, by all means. <laughs> cool. Good with me. Ooh. Okay. Uh, that was not as good. Um, that yeah, was an You have a reroll. I do yeah. have a reroll, but what fun is that? That's true. Uh, that's well. it, don't make it like one of those video game items that sits in your inventory the whole time. <laughs> it doesn't bad. matter. Um, <laughs> no, fuck it. I'll take a complication. Um, the effect is less than you wanted. I'll say okay. that it just like half traps him like he's slower so so oh uh, yeah harper you're running and and then suddenly you're like still like doing the motion of running but it, it's like it's like quicksand in the air yes. like you're having to fight against um oh, like running in a dream yeah yeah you're trying to fight against like the magical like forces of time to move at the speed that you want um until eventually the first person that catches you is is Violet, and she jumps up on your yeah. back and starts to lick 
uh, your face uh, where uh, some of the blood is from the head. <laughs> um, yes. yes. And you, you are eventually uh, joined by uh, Igor and Victor who can catch up uh, slightly slower than an animal with four legs, but still, uh, still fast enough. Yeah. And then Harper's just absolutely unconscious at the syringe. <laughs> There you go, Master Harper. All right. I'm going to grab one of his legs and try to drag him back to everyone else. I'll help. All right. you, do you need to shoot him with the, the stuff? The or I, 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 I yeah. was going to, yeah. And like you pin him in the thigh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. I'll do that before I touch him any other way. I don't want my head to be chopped off. I saw what it does to like a... F- Superpowered monster. I'm a f- just normal dude. <laughs> <laughs> Igor, colon, just some guy. <laughs> <It's> autobiography. <laughs> um, I'm thinking about like the Borderlands intros where it says like Reese, a company oh, man. Igor, cards, yeah. just some guy. <laughs> um, exactly. Yeah. Yes, and so, yes, Victor and Igor, you manage to, uh, as Harper kind of slowly retracts uh, back to form, uh, his usual form, um, you are uh, you are able to return to Clefarian, uh, doing what after you have marked the Shriga corpse? Um, Clefarian's just watching it burn and mumbling to themselves about how that was too quick for what she deserved yeah um yeah um other than that um you are uh you are technically done so uh her clothing kind of like ripped off in her transformation so if you want her keys um up into that silo you are welcome to them um, yeah, and, that. um, if you want to go back into the house, you are welcome to do that. And if you just want to head home, uh, you can do that too. Uh, it is all up to you. We have some, uh, we have some time left to wrap up. Oh yeah. Let's fucking look through our stuff. Yeah. We got to go read. The uh, silo Igor's already opening the door. Like <laughs> nobody had to say anything. Of course the door's open. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, alternatively, Igor's motto, say less. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, the silo is um, not as nice, I guess. N- not as fancy, maybe is the right word, as the inside of the house. Um, it- it's clearly old. Uh, the paint on the stairs that spiral up uh, to the floor uh, the the floors of use uh is chipping um as you head up um you're greeted with a a very interesting space uh, a mixed space um lots of stuff in here uh make a great escape room um there is uh the things that are supposed to be here um there are lots of stacks of paper Manuscripts, both handwritten and uh, pressed uh, through a typewriter or a larger uh, printing press. And there is a printing press itself um, up here, Um, not currently in use because I'm pretty sure it would still have to be manually operated at this time. Um, uh, But it is there not too far from the window. Um, And then there are other things. Probably more of interest to to you all. There is um, a cabinet uh, within it, a collection of um, letters and uh, paper artifacts of other kinds, uh, including uh, deeds, uh, sketches, accounts, stuff like that, um, uh, that range for um, a few hundred years. Um, back um, mostly across uh, Europe um, and uh, anything that 
that you can catch with a name has some variety of Veronica. Um, so there's one or two recent ones uh, in London newspapers that detail uh, Veronica Davies um, uh, within her own career, but there are also other Veronicas um, of past um, written to in letters, some of them in languages that you don't understand, but the name is clear enough with that big capital V that you know what it is. Um, uh, beyond that, uh, coffee table, a small couch, uh, like the two-person kind where there's like the two cushions. Um, I don't know, furniture stuff. Um, you've got, um, a bulletin board, um, pinned up here, um, sometimes with traditional pins, sometimes with safety pins, uh, and et cetera, and et cetera, um, are, uh, bits of information about other people. Um, some of which is about, uh, Cyrus Wilmington, um, uh, other people involved in these cases, including some information about uh, the five of you, um, is um, pinned up here. Um, perhaps the weirdest thing of all uh, is uh, there's a large table in this room, big rectangular stretching table, like a banquet table, albeit a little bit shorter. Um, with every single place setting set, uh, but only the chair at the head seems to have had anywhere ever. That's what's up here. I don't like that. She was expecting company. Does anyone remember the episode one unseen? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry, I'm the worst. I don't. <laughs> I don't think I took. Oh, I think it was the cold them. open. Actually, that's fine. But Easter now I want to know. You have a Easter eggs. I'll explain after. Okay. Well, that was really cool how you prefaced this in the beginning. Because, <laughs> uh, now Igor. everyone has to go back and watch episode one. No, you don't. Oh, <laughs> good point. I'm gonna do that. I, I know I will because I this is I'm, this is the shit that I live for. Uh, Igor is going to take anything that seems important or expensive and bag it. Uh, the, the lighter, the better. So like all the deeds, all the paperwork, he's going to take special care to pick all of the information that has any of us, like a specifically our group's information, but he's not going to back that. He's going to keep it like under his arm with his umbrella. And then he's just going to wait for everybody else to finish whatever they want. I think probably the the most the like the nicest like thing you would find in here is that she has a few kind of like on like a sill. Um, I think they're called pisanka, uh, which is like the the decorated eggs that they do um, in uh, Polish art. They're really delicate and really intricate. Um, she does have a few of those. Um, other than that, there's likely some cash somewhere up here. Uh, nothing of a particularly like scandalous amount, not like in the safe for Jesus Christ, you took that whole safe. Um, <laughs> Do but, um, we have to fund somehow? Also, the doctor's Meta. bag is real big. Like, that's perfect. Meta question. It, Meta question. Because I, I don't want to be offensive. Um, are the very delicate things you just mentioned, are those like of a cultural significance or more of a personal significance? It's just an art form that originated in that area. Um, it um, To be like very good at it, it takes a long time. So as a GM, I thought that it would be something that um, she may have picked up because she's had so oh. much time to be alive. So uh, she, that she made can do these. it. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! I take the fucking bat to them. I fuck like oh, full no, on that that no. home <laughs> run swing and just shatter it. We could have sold those for some money. You totally could have sold those. <laughs> we could have. 
<laughs> but money isn't everything, my dear Igor. And I'll put a hand on Igor's shoulder. Money isn't everything. Sometimes you have to spit in the face of the dead so they stay where they belong. Rotting in hell. Yeah? All right. Amen. I feel good. <laughs> this was a good night. This worked out well. I have a new thing to torture Harper with. I'm sure you could salvage some body parts for whatever the good doctor has going on. Uh, no. Not really. It needs to burn. Oh, Lord, I've left Emery with the doctor. We should probably return to the Hargrave house. The doctor is not in the business of killing people. She's in the business of making their body parts useful. I am aware of that. <laughs> uh, in my head canon, Emery is very nervous around medical professionals. Yeah, I just uh, my my only contingency her. about Emery is that they are like androgynous and American. Uh, because I didn't want to have to do a British accent for everybody, so I gave myself one mm -hmm. uh, reprieve. Um, so, uh, yes. So. Uh, Back to the Hargrave house uh, you go, where uh, you can find uh, Marianne, Abigail, uh, who has uh, recovered from her uh, fainting spell. Uh, she isn't playing, uh, but she is kind of watching Marianne's hand, like a two, two, two people, one player um, type of thing. Um, Emery... And Cyrus, uh, all playing cards uh, around a table uh, in your sitting room uh, when you arrive. Uh, promptly covered in uh, ash to some degree. Maybe blood. <laughs> right then, so now you've scored uh, 10 points. And... Um... <laughs> Oh, I actually kind of see. Wait, what's going on? Oh, they're back. <laughs> Hello. Uh, <clears throat> Abigail asks, you know, what happened? I think I cut your mother's head off. I'm just going straight there with Oh, them. you're not going to faint again, are you? We told you that we would have to deal with your mother. No, my head kind of hurts from the last time. Uh, you she's sitting down. But... Fainting couch. <laughs> she's sitting down, but she will sit back like against. Uh, I, I in my head, she was sitting on the floor, so she will sit against the cushion of uh, the couch or chair that is uh, behind her. And she goes, uh, "No, I, uh, I knew that. That's kind of how this would." And I, mm. I just, I feel bad for not feeling bad about it, I guess. Oh, I can relate to that. When I killed my father, I felt the same way for quite a while, but it'll pass. How I assure you. Start a sentence like that. That happens a lot in this house, actually. Oh, they do this all the time. That's what makes them so great. Oh, Hi, Lefarian. I am glad you're feeling better, darling, and I will kiss Emery on the cheek. Enjoying yeah, cards? Okay. Uh, Sueka. Hmm. Oh, you be careful with that now. She'll clean you out. Uh, I don't got much for her to clean. We haven't started playing for money yet. I save that for all of you. Um, how did it... How did it go? Will we have any oh, well. future problems? Pretty easy, no. honestly. Well, um, thanks to Victor's magic. I'm quite proud of you all, then. That's wonderful. Wait, yes. did you say Victor's magic? Yeah, uh, Victor uh, froze her. She couldn't move. That's rather Victor. handy. Yeah. You can make a lot of money doing that. If you're interested in my line of work. Which is <laughs> that's all. <laughs> so, um, 
as the camera pans out on the Hargrave house tonight, uh, I'd like to give everybody a taste on uh, what happens to some of the familiar faces that I have uh, stepped in for uh, in the uh, coming months. Um, your local newspaper, uh, perhaps about uh, two days from now, um, is delivered um, to your porch step. Uh, it says something along the lines of a uh, tragic Christmas Eve house fire uh, destroys Davy's estate. Uh, uh, groundskeeper uh, Charlie Collins to blame. Um, two dead, um, but Hugh Davies escapes uninjured. Um, Hugh Davies is, Hugh is her dad's first name. Um, you swing by to see that the fire, never having been put out, um, for better or for worse, consumed the grounds, um, and burned it down. Um, Oh, everybody's saying too. Um, Abigail is gone. Yeah, that's uh, what I was gonna say. It was they're oh, assuming Abigail's dead. Right. So right. God, that, so I was, I was like, what did we miss? <laughs> no, yeah, sorry. They, no, they, no, they, they think Abigail's like, not there. Two. Abigail and Marianne are both gone technically, but yeah. Um, yeah. Um, oh, I, by the way, uh, just quick parentheses. Uh, Igor was would have given them some of the money that he's gathered from the from the mansion safe. We will get to that in a minute. Okay. Um, Sick. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Hugh Davies has pinned the fire on their groundskeeper. Um, escaped with some of his belongings, um, uh, but allegedly not much. Um, and has announced that um, he will be, um, after mourning the loss of his daughter and his wife, uh, will be heading away to Spain uh, to uh, take an extended leave, uh, work on his work, and find life for himself again um, in a new place. I will ask you all, do you tell him that Abigail is alive or still alive or he was actually concerned about her. I think we, yeah, like the doctor would have been on board of telling him. Yeah. Harper would defer. Um, in this reunion, uh, in which Abigail is emboldened to inform her father of her wishes after all this time, um, he will agree to cover her ass uh, as an apology for uh, having been blind to her mother's abuse for so many years, um, as long as she promises to come back and see him someday soon. Uh, she can write him and be free of the Davies name. Um, um, then we have uh, Abigail and Cyrus uh, themselves, um, assumedly with the help of Harper. Um, Abigail, formerly Davies, now Abigail Hargrave, um, and Cyrus, formerly Wilmington, now Cyrus Hargrave, um, will find themselves uh, on a boat um, across to the United States. Um, with very uh, little um, other than perhaps a book of the American Sign Language um, for, uh, for our favorite redhead, uh, Cyrus. Um, maybe second favorite redhead, Cyrus. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, some coin as provided by Igor. Uh, their, their original documents for safekeeping, uh, some clothing and the like. Um, and after a long journey, they will arrive um, in the port of New York, where they will make their way by carriage, slowly but surely, to Louisiana uh, to meet Harper's contact and start a new life 
as two people who know more than they ever expected to. Within their bag, when Igor finally checks it, um, among uh, a, a large amount of money um, and uh, the documents requested, um, you will find um, some interesting valuables. Um, these are some uh, some old, old money pieces. Like it would be old money if it was from the time period that we're in now. Um, but but you you've you've come across uh, the literal family jewels um, here. Um, some finer uh, pieces of jewelry uh, with emerald, sapphire, um, as well as uh, the original plans for the Davies estate, um, who um, in which Hugh thought that he had lost in the fire. Um, and I guess lastly, uh, Marianne, uh, unsure kind of, of what to do with herself um, after having served a family for 20 some odd years of steady employment, uh, hangs around the Hargrave house for a while until eventually an old friend of yours who also never knows what to do with himself comes around. Um, and Marianne eventually finds herself to be uh, the first employee of uh, Anton's haberdashery. Um, <laughs> um, and that is a strange and happy union uh, that no one can complain about. And I would love to know now what the rest of you do. <laughs> I'll start calling people if you don't tell uh, me. The doctor is, it continues to collect the pieces that she needs for her project in the laboratory. And um, tries to play as much cards as possible while fighting monsters and going to the seedier parts of town for funsies lovely i want to jump in here because harper after how, however many years he's been at the hargrave house smelling everything that's going on down there uh will approach the good doctor and uh lay things out and say something along the lines of now i carried this proclivity with me uh when i moved over here but I have a penchant for uh, hunting folks. Uh, I, I mean, I mean specifically hunting people. Uh, sometimes I go out in the middle of the night, and uh, if you remember when uh, when Anton first came to us, we were passing by the graveyard, and there was a young man. I pointed out. Uh, my handiwork uh and I, I i believe all of us saw you uh acquire in certain parts uh i would be more than happy to help you in whatever endeavors you have uh to serve both of our goals these people that you hunt is it are there particular people that you go for There are people connected to a certain industry back across the pond for me. Uh, industry of flesh that I find uh, repugnant in every kind. <clears throat> well then, as long as the pots are c come to me fresh, I could find that useful. And if you... <clears throat> Is there anything that you would like from me in return no well this is quite advantageous isn't it um that would be lovely thank you it'd be my pleasure and she gives you a checklist of all the pieces she's she need, needs still oh yeah harper will uh will be very happy to do that 
uh with that new mission uh flavoring his uh his vice as he uh satiates it whenever he needs to uh Harper will start to be a little bit more loose about his curse around the house, uh, asking for help when he needs it, or just going out in the middle of the night and coming back, Harry. <laughs> yeah, coming back, Harry, uh, and with a few a few body parts in tow. Uh, but Harper is very happy. He's found that there is no shortage of the evil that he sees in humanity in London. Uh, and he uh, will continue to stamp that out. Who's next? Lefarian can go next because it's it's fairly simple. Um, they just continue working on the song until they eventually one day complete it. And uh, outside of that, just they remain in the Hargrave house occasionally uh well not more than occasionally frequently having you know the worshipers come to and fro and uh eventually uh names uh the temple where the worshipers generally gather uh he uh, they rename it the um jasmine caldwell society Uh, Igor, are you doing anything in particular? Oh, oh, he for sure is. Um, Igor is going to between helping the doctor with whatever uh, she needs and providing assistance to everybody else and keeping the house clean. He's going to use all the deeds he has acquired and very slowly but surely make them his property through whatever methodology is necessary and then probably lease them out as a means to get money Not because the landlord arc. <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> the landlord arc. <laughs> repairs and keeping everybody fed and bedded and warm is not something that can be done for free so igor needs to keep his house and home uh Igor's the next Ready monster we go after. <laughs> no, he he's also going to use the money to establish something of a network of individuals that he keeps a payroll to keep an ear to the ground to try to be more proactive on figuring out things so that we don't have to mess with Anton again. Good. Weasley, little man. All right, <laughs> picture. What do you got? Cool. Um, so, firstly, um, he would like to start teaching Violet tricks. Um, <laughs> um, that's that's goal number one. That might take a very long time. Um, <laughs> um, just because cats um but she's she's good um so um i'd like to think that i can teach her um like fetch um um stuff like that be fun time um i think she's capable of that yeah yeah she can totally do that um and then um secondly um i would like to approach lefarian um and be like uh, so you said I could make money? Uh, yes, of course, darling. People are interested in all manner of things. Just just by freezing them? Oh, yes. You wouldn't even have to do more than that. Now, you could make more money if you did do more than that, but you wouldn't have to. I'm interested. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll vet your clients and ensure that they understand their boundaries. And if you have a problem with anyone, let me know. Cool. So I'm going to pursue that. And Dr. Betancourt, you needed something from Victor as well. Yeah. So at some point, um, the doctor uh, uh, invites Victor to the parlor for drinks and um, to teach you how to play Soeka. And she's... 
uh, gets you good and, and tipsy, like buzzed, you know. And she goes, remember when you were really upset about the feet? You wanted yes. to know what the feet were for. Um, I'm working on a, on a project that when I get towards the end of it, I might need your, your help. So... More feet? No, I only need the one pair. Okay. Um, okay, that's good. Yes, Hoppa is gathering the other items that I need, and once I have all of the parts to make, um, I'm working on building a child. Um, but not a small child, like an adult-sized a child for, for me. Um, and when I get towards, towards the end of it, I was hoping that you might, might be able to help me with the creation of life not in the way that you might be thinking oh i have really buggled this um yeah no with the magic <laughs> okay with actual m magic not with i'm with you now okay yes um not that kind of child exactly a different a different kind that uses the parts of dead people i believe we can create life <laughs> Okay. This is something we can work on. Okay. Wonderful. And just to be clear, I'm not interested in, uh, in making children. Yes, neither. Well, <laughs> I'm interested in making children, but not in the way that you are implying. Um, just the one. And okay, cool. just through this specific way. Okay. Hmm. This can be discussed. Wonderful. And that's uh, that's it. Uh, and as the season of Christmas passes uh, and a new year begins in London, uh, the months pass and the snow melts, there is a little bit less blood in it than before. Um, and this has been the Midnight Hour. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for joining me as players, uh, for hearing out my love letter to Hemlock Grove. That's what this is. I revealed to my players already, but that's where, uh, that is the, the piece of my heart that uh, this came from uh, with uh, Polish folklore and, uh, and towns and intrigue. Um, and so I just want all of my lovely players to uh, uh, give a little bit of a plug for themselves and the other stuff that they might be doing coming up uh, before we let you all go. And I will try to remember my order backwards as I usually do and only succeed half of the time. Nikki? Yep. <laughs> go ahead. Um, I am Nikki. I'm co-creator here at TTRPG. I'm an educator, streamer, LGBTQ, and disability advocate. You can follow me pretty much everywhere online as halfling underscore Nikki. Um, link in the chat and um upcoming stuff so saturday is our second episode of avatar reclamations our pilot episode was last saturday please watch it even though there were a ton of tech issues um it was a really good time um and we have a pilot episode cast and then a different cast uh for the rest of the episode so um tune in to see what the other two new players um uh, what shenanigans they get up into and then on the 23rd Please, please join us for Dragon Day um, from 10 a.m. to midnight Pacific. We will have um, three dragon games and two uh, mini episodes of our talk show. And it'll be for the Children Bur Children's Burn Foundation. It's for Classical Gliza's birthday. And we just announced yesterday that Abria Iyengar will be joining us. So, bow, 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 bow. Um, but yeah, so check that out. Cameron? Yeah. You yeah. Got it. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Cameron. Uh you can find me on Twitter at at WorldSmith underscore Cam. Uh I'm a uh an activist, uh agitator, uh tabletop role playing game designer, writer. All my projects are currently in NDA right now. But uh if you have a spot on a show, you'd love a love for me to fill, you hit me up. I'm happy to help you out. Uh, I'm also, like I said, a writer, but I don't see any project. I'm happy to help you on. Um, yeah, uh, stay safe out there. Uh, the world's pretty dark right now, but we can build a better one together.
Joel. Uh, uh, I'm I'm Joel. Uh, I'm, I'm most of the time I'm over on Talking XP uh, on Mondays where we play through Curse of Strahd. I play a halfling wizard uh, who can only do cold magic for reasons. Uh, it's, it's it's very intense. Things are escalating. Uh, uh, but I also have my own Patreon where all my stories that I've written over the years are. Uh, I'm in the process of turning those into audio files as well so people can listen to them if they want to or if they need to. Um, I'm also going to be uh, putting up uh, my homebrew on there for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. I currently only have, uh, not there yet, but they're going to go up. I have a barbarian a class called Path of the Blazing Fury and a wizard subclass called School of Cryomancy. Um which, you know, I wonder how I came up with that one. Uh, but I also have, which I think is my my favorite one of the ones that I've made, I have a fairy dragonborn, which uh, it's basically just a dragonborn, but instead of dealing damage, you inflict fairy fire on, uh, on your targets, which is niche, but that's what I do. Caleb. Hello, I'm Caleb. Uh, please follow my Twitter at extra candy underscore. That's where I am all of the time, including when I probably shouldn't be. Um, I am in the process of getting my Twitch channel up and running. Um, so watch for that. I will definitely post about that on Twitter when it is up. Uh, I'm also available for other shows. I am available in this time slot starting next week um so if anyone uh wants me to be on things i'll be there and uh the ever booked and busy newly sponsored d <laughs> uh, sorry had to let a demon escape um <laughs> hi my name, uh, hello my lovely children of the dark my name is d thank you so much for joining us this evening i have been Lefarian Anton Estair. And uh, on Mondays, you can find me over on the Critical Misses channel where I play a day Zuko and Roll 20 sponsored show Kingsguard. Um, on Wednesdays, you can find me on that same channel where I am the mind behind Blue Ghosts, which is a Blades in the Dark Heat meets Don Bluth cartoon, cartoon styled heist game uh, that you can also find our lovely resident Arcane Goth in. On uh, Thursdays, you can join me over on my channel where I make up one part of the ever powerful Triforce that is the Dub Club. We play multiplayer games and we never lose. We've only ever won. There's no need to fact check that statement. Um, I'm a very trustworthy person. Uh, on Fridays, you can usually catch me streaming something ridiculous on my channel. And every other Friday, so not this week, but next week, you can catch me over on Gut Punch RP where I play uh, Lady Liliana Paltain in a D&D 5e campaign called Darkness Rising, which is a fun blast. As Max mentioned, I am currently sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. I'll save you all the spiel, but you should check out my Twitter to see how you can, for free and for only about 20 minutes of your time, help out a trans Black creator survive in this capitalistic world. Lastly, but never leastly, I am the reigning, retaining, TTRPG Universal Champion. And if you want to find out how you can get yourself some bling like this, you should follow me on Twitter at It's the Riddler. Thank you all so much for joining us. This was a great campaign. It was so much fun. Hi, I'm Max. Um, I had a great time running this. I love this group. Nikki never fails to put together a table with good chemistry, and I will die on that hill. Um, you can find me uh, no longer here at this time slot for now, uh, but maybe in the future, as I often find myself here and happy to be here. Uh, on Wednesdays, you can find me over on Critical Misses, uh, playing in Dee's uh, Blade and Blades in the Dark campaign. Um, other than that, I am scheduled to run a charity one-shot of Tales from the Loop uh, with uh, Dexara19 uh, uh, on their channel. I think April 3rd or April 4th uh, for Parkinson's uh, Parkinson's donation. Uh, so that is coming up in the spring. Uh, but until then, I am unbooked and not busy. Uh, so I also would love to be in your things, play with new people, play with old friends. Uh, I am here. 
And uh, I just want to thank everybody again for joining us. Uh, if you've watched five minutes of the campaign or if you've watched every minute of it, it really was a fun one to put together. Uh, some good old fashioned mystery with some uh, lesser known supernatural qualities. Uh, so everybody uh, have a good night. Be safe and don't let any creatures of Polish folklore hurt you. Night.